Hello, and welcome to Casual Buddhism. I'm Cindy Rothico, author of Finding Venerable Mother and devoted disciple of Venerable Dhammananda Pikuni. Venerable Dhammananda is the first fully ordained Theravada Buddhist nun in Thailand, and also the abbess of Songdama Kalyani Temple. And every week we speak with, Ven I have a guest who speaks with Venerable on really any life related issue, Buddhism, Buddhist practice, whatever the person would like to discuss. And they have a sharing conversation. So tonight our guest is a friend of mine, Tanya, and I'm gonna turn it over to her and she's gonna ask, uh, begin to talk, begin, begin her discussion. Thanks, Cindy. Hi, everyone, and Venerable, it is so um, lovely to meet you Wonderful. over Zoom, so thank you. Um, so my question, um, or my first question is, um, I consider myself to be kind of early on in my, my spiritual, I guess, journey or practice, and I wonder just broadly what advice you would have for me um, and others where you would say we should prioritize our, our thought, our thinking, and our process, if that makes sense. Uh, you need to prioritize what is your most immediate need. Suppose right now, right now I have an have a physical uh, urgency to go to toilet. <laughs> that, that would be my priority, you know? So sometimes it is something very, uh, not important, something very simple, but it is very immediate for you. So that, that's how you, you should respond to your, how, how to react to the, the present moment. Always come back to present moment and be sincere. Mm -hmm. Be sincere with ourselves, you know? Uh, Many times in life, we try to be polite, we try to please others, and we try to go according to social protocol without respect to yourself, mm -hmm. your physical self. And I, 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 I say that because I have, I had been through that, you know, to realize that that is not good. I mean, you can be true to yourself, yet be polite to the to the circumstances. Do not allow uh, outside circumstance to force you to go according to this is what you call the the norm. You know, the social norm. The social mm -hmm. norm is meant for us to live comfortably. Social mm -hmm. norm is not there to force us to be in this particular kind of frame, and then uh, rigid yourself. If we realize that you know we can compromise between this social protocol at the same time respect to your physical being, mm -hmm. I think this is very important. Very important, and we have to be uh, sincere to ourselves. Often we are not sincere. We are not respecting ourselves enough, uh, and we always care for others, care for circumstances, care for social uh, binding, social protocol much too much, I think, much too much to, to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's so helpful. Um, what you say really resonates with me in terms of um, being programmed to worry so much about what other people think. Yes. So um, maybe it leads kind of to a follow-up question. Um, so as I try myself more to meditate and sit in silence um, and then go about my day, I sometimes feel like I'm still too much in my head and it is hard to, um, I guess it, it's, it's very difficult for me to um, kind of sift through what is real, what is real for me versus what I think is real for others or what others expect of me. Yes, yes. Do you have, do you, do you have suggestions? Does it just take practice or are there other things that I could be doing? Uh, Tanya, you know, come back to your breathing and feel if your breathing is normal, if you feel comfortable with your breathing. Often, you know, we, 
breathe so shallow because we want to please others you know we want to go according to what others outside us you know expected us to be and by being that you know we did not even care for ourselves to breathe properly we, so we breathe very shallow mm -hmm. and and at times you know it becomes our habit of that that is how you breathe you know you breathe only halfway through and just sit and relax and see whether you can breathe comfortably deep enough to actually nurture this body this physical body this physical body is something that you need to take care of because eventually it is this physical body that can see you through your life mm -hmm. see so often we disregard disregard this respect so come back sit sit back and relax and take a deep breath really deep breath and allow yourself to to enjoy the, this deep breath that you are taking mm -hmm. i think that is that is a checkpoint a checkpoint for you whether you are you are okay whether you are taking good care of this physical self wow yes. that's beautiful i can do that <laughs> yes you can do that yeah uh, you know i nobody told me this you know and <laughs> nobody told me this for so many years that uh, that I, I, my own breath was very shallow because I was so afraid of this and that and that, you know, and I, I was not sincere to myself. So what I'm sharing with you, Tanya, Tanya, is very much myself and how I discovered the difficult way. So I would like to share with you so that you dis discover it uh, uh, sooner, <laughs> sooner than I did. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So then, then we begin meditation, you know. Meditation is always about the breathing. You can actually look at something else, but, but breathing is always with you. Yes, so breathing is always with you. Some, some people, you know, they, they meditate by focusing on this ball, the crystal ball, uh, which means that when you travel, you have to carry the crystal ball with you all the time. No, so that's why I said it is much easier to come back to your to your breathing in and out and just note that it is normal. Note that you take deep breath to heal yourself, to nurture yourself, begin like that. And then you, it kind of anchor you, you know, anchor you uh, with the swing, emotional swing that takes you left and right. It anchors you down and then, then you can you can feel First, feel comfortable with yourself. Before mm -hmm. you do anything else, feel comfortable with this physical form. Be kind, be kind to yourself, mm -hmm. meaning be kind to your physical form. We have uh, ill-treated our physical form for so long that now we have to be reminded that before anything else, it is this physical form that allows you to do wonderful things. Mm -hmm. but come back to number one. Mm -hmm. Always come back to number one, that this physical form, be kind to it. Be loving, loving kindness that you express to yourself. It's beautiful. And it goes with a smile. How long, yeah. how long have you smiled? Maybe the last one was last year. <laughs> you know, so allow yourself to smile and allow yourself to just enjoy, enjoy nature that is presenting itself in front of you. But we have not looked at it because we were so busy, you know, we were so busy with so many other things. Come back to this, come back to this existence, this present moment. Look at Look at the grass, look look at the dandelion, you know. I don't know whether your country call that dandelion. This is mm -hmm. in Canada. Uh, people always want to get, get rid of dan dandelion, you know. But don't you think that it's a beautiful flower? <laughs> mm. <laughs> look at it, it's yellow, it's so nice, you know. It's so nice. Look at it and allow itself to present itself to you you know sometimes when you look at nature and you just wonder and you appreciate oh my that's beautiful 
as you appreciate the dandelion that many people want to get rid of in your front yard, it allows you to be in touch with yourself. Mm -hmm. mm. So beautiful. And Venerable, I was wondering, was there a time in your life when the breathing became easier for you or taking care of your, I think you call it, be gentle with yourself. Was there a time in your life when that became more important or less difficult for you because you said you had shallow breathing for a long time? Yes, because I was looking at everything else. I was giving importance to everything else but myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. So come back to the breathing and be normal, accepting, loving this self. Mm -hmm. When you became ordained, was it after you were ordained and became a monastic? Did you feel it was easier to be more loving towards yourself? Oh, that was, uh, the, the first year was very tense because there were lots of criticism. Yes, right. <laughs> criticism from talking. outside, yes. So, mm -hmm. but, but yes, monastic life, uh, uh, because you change in your lifestyle, you know, so it actually allowed you to have more space, more space to just, to just sit and, and be with yourself. Mm -hmm. Very important with your breathing. Very important that you are relaxed. Very important that you love this existence. Mm. You feel kind to it. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually feel this loving kindness to your physical form. Then you can extend it to others. Ah, other people also need to have love for this existence, this mm -hmm. existence of this particular form. And then oh, oh, I do many mistakes. Oh, other people also, when you have, look at somebody making mistake, you realize that, oh, just like me, I also made the same mistake. And there is that sense of forgiving, mm -hmm. forgiveness. Forgiveness comes when you realize that you made mistake and people also make mistake. And we make mistakes to make so many mistakes in our life. And so when you look at someone making mistake, uh, there is that sense of, joy <laughs> sense of joy because you also see yourself in that person mm -hmm. so the tension is gone you know when you realize that oh you can that person also make the same mistake just like how you did so there's uh, uh this forgiveness forgiveness when forgiveness comes you know that great sense of relaxation mm -hmm. you actually feel that great sense of relaxation within yourself Tanya, I was wondering in your busy schedule at work, if it's very difficult for you to, um, if it's difficult to maintain that kind of self-regard that Venerable is speaking about. Um, it is. I feel like um, Venerable has been sitting by me all day today. I've been on, on Zoom since about 7 a.m. this morning, just back to back to back. So yeah. it is really hard. Um, and I'm just, I'm thinking about what you just said about forgiveness and maybe it's also just patience and acceptance too, that, um, those become so much more difficult when your day is just filled with busyness. Sometimes you know, Tanya, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I just look at this, uh, this uh, novice why are you so stupid why can't you see this it is so normal why can't you see it mm -hmm. because you have to think the other way around i mean if she knows the way you know she would have been venerable mother <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be a novice she would have been a venerable mother yeah. you see so like that you can laugh you know you can right. laugh about it and, and then and then that that great sense of forgiveness comes you know I, I i speak to you with my own experience of getting mm -hmm. so so much headache with uh, something like this it is so so it's common sense don't you see it well it's not common sense for them that's why they make this mistake you know right right <laughs> then you can laugh mm -hmm. then you can laugh and and you can let go you can forgive easier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes do so, allow yourself to laugh. 
laugh like, at your own, ourself and yes. laugh at others. Yes. Laugh and breathe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both very much. Um, it was a pleasure to hear about you tonight, Tanya, and you really have some questions that I think a lot of people can relate to. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. And um, just want to welcome other people. If you're interested in being a guest on Casual Buddhism, you can contact me at my uh, website, cindyrossico.com. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. And thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Venerable. Thank you, thank you Venerable Cindy.